Hello everyone, it's Tim Spector here from the Zoe Health Study and I'm here with a very special update for you because today marks three years to when we started the COVID symptom study app, you might remember, at the beginning of lockdown and the pandemic. And uh, it all seems a long time ago, to me anyway, uh, that we did this and brought you this app within five days of thinking of the idea and millions of you um, helped us with it. Now, um, it took us a while to get funded, as you know, um, and we now can see why from those WhatsApp messages that Matt Hancock definitely had his hands full. Um, but we did get funded and uh, this funding from the Department of Health enabled us to reach even more people and uh, work directly with the government uh, rather than uh, in the dark and help them with vital COVID information over that time. And as the government moved away from uh, focusing on COVID and uh, many other people did as well, we also did the same in our research. And so um, although many of you were so outraged that our funding was cut so dramatically with only two weeks notice by the Department of Health. Um, you did write to the government and uh, the sheer volume of your protests actually crashed their servers, um, which they got upset about. But uh, now the good news is we are fully funded by Zoe and uh, we're still researching and doing so much more than just COVID. Now, I want to just tell you a bit about what we've achieved in the last three years to recap, uh, because I think it is important to share these observations uh, and how we worked so well together over the last few years. So we had 4.67 million unique contributors uh, who joined the app, and that's over 568 million reports between you. That's a lot of what would have been paperwork in the old days. Um, now, over one and a half million logged your first COVID jabs with us in, in 2021. And uh, that um, was, and nearly as many of you got that recorded the second, third, and some even the fourth vaccines. And there's so many studies that we launched on the basis of that. We ran the mental health survey uh, with 717,000 of you who helped us discover the impact that the pandemic was having on our mental well-being. And of course, uh, many people still suffering the side effects of that. We mustn't uh, forget that. Uh, and many people suffering from long COVID. And uh, we looked at this together with over a, a million participants uh, showing who was most at risk and who wasn't, and actually dispelling some of those early myths about it only affecting uh, young sporty women and really affecting nearly everybody in society. Um, and it is, it is sad that we haven't actually moved very far forward on the treatment of, of long COVID. Um, we also learned uh, that um, much more about the symptoms of COVID, the, the 20 different symptoms. And if you remember, the government was fixated on saying there are any two or three symptoms of COVID and nothing else could possibly be COVID. And your data gave us that crucial information to say that um, loss of smell and then cold-like symptoms and all the rest were very much part of the picture. Um, of course, we identified key symptoms of Omicron, uh, how they differed from the various um, alpha and delta variants, which we also tracked. And I think we're seeing from some of these um, leaked messages how uh, some people in the government were trying to scare of you into action on lockdown. We gave you the facts and uh, we, in an unbiased way said we looked at each new variant and said that it wasn't changing much or it was changing slightly, but I think uh, gave a balanced approach. We didn't have any vested interest in lockdowns or non-lockdowns unlike, as we're finding out, many people uh, did in government. Um, uh, I think 
we have to also remember that you helped us discover um, how quickly vaccines were working or fading. And if you remember, that was quite a big time when a lot of people rushed out, got their vaccine and, and uh, infected other people, um, thinking they were protected in some way because uh, there was a bit of a miscommunication about how these vaccines were actually totally protecting people and very quickly. We gave you the data and showed the relative uh, protective effect on previous infections and uh, showed that these were never 100% and um, varied from about 60% effectiveness um, up to uh, in the 90% for, for serious uh, risk, for serious rates of COVID. Also done other things together. Um, uh, and I think what we have to remember is as we switched from COVID to uh, studying other diseases, um, we uh, have got 148,000 of you that have taken part in our intermittent fasting study. The, we call the big if study. This is by far the biggest community science study done of uh, fasting and uh, is getting some really positive results. Um, 107,000 of you took part in our habit tracker study, seeing how your habits can change in January as uh, we try and make New Year's resolutions and seeing which worked and which didn't. Uh, 104,000 took part in the big diet study where we're actually looking at in detail about uh, what people are eating across the UK. And at 56,000 of you managed to get hold of blood pressure equipment yourself and take home readings and show some really fascinating insights as to what really happens uh, to your blood pressure and how people who don't take a look at their tablets regularly have very different uh, blood pressures to those that really adhere. Um, so all this has been incredibly um, uh, exciting for the scientists behind the app, uh, people, my team that I, I'm working with, uh, all the diligent analysts, etc. And it also means that we're, with these massive data sets, we can actually transmit this to many other people, some which aren't on the app, uh, but are available on social media. So um, the people watching now on YouTube, for example, I've watched our videos over 30 million times. That is amazing. That's uh, more than 3.8 million hours. And the most popular videos um, uh, we're, we're seeing are, strangely, uh, what I eat in a day, uh, which I think is rather boring, but other people didn't. But um, we had a 1.3 million people actually looking at the podcast with uh, the American uh, cardiologist, Dr. Lee, on heart health and aging. Um, and these are incredible numbers that uh, I think before the age of social media and quite recently, we just wouldn't have achieved. Um, and I think it's all due to this amazing partnership we have um, with uh, you citizen scientists. Um, so really, uh, I'm really excited about what's coming up uh, in the next year as we try and do more of these community experiments together. We've got some fascinating ideas and we're, uh, we really want you to help uh, point us in the right direction what you think we're doing right. And so we do more of that kind of stuff. Um, particularly focusing on lifestyle, on dietary changes, simple changes that all of us can do that get ignored by the medical establishment, don't get funding, don't get government help. And uh, and lots of myth busting uh, in the same way we did with, with COVID. So I'm super excited and I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you for allowing us to conduct this groundbreaking science together and allowing us to share it with the world, all those millions of people that are seeing it. So thanks again, stay safe and keep logging.